Welcome to my channel Pharma Companion. Today we'll discuss about the topic ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. So UV visible spectroscopy refers to the absorption spectroscopy or the reflectance spectroscopy in the ultraviolet visible spectral region. UV visible spectroscopy is an analytical method that can measure the analyte quantity depending upon the amount of light received by the analyte. When a beam of ultraviolet light is passed through a sample, some of the light gets absorbed and some light gets transmitted. The amount of transmitted light is measured in the UV spectroscopy. So in this diagram you will see the ultraviolet and visible area which measures up to from 200 nanometer to 800 nanometer. So first of all gamma rays range from 0 0.0001 to 0 0.01 nanometer and then X-ray starts from 0 0.01 nanometer to 10 nanometers as shown in the diagram. Then the ultraviolet and visible region starts. On going from right to left in this order increases the energy and on going from left to right in this order increases the wavelength and all as we all know the blue and the violet region consists more wave number and the red region consists of more wavelength so this is the basic diagram for the ultraviolet spectrophotometer which consists of a source from which the ultraviolet light is, is passed and it is then passed to the monochromator whose function is just to convert the polychromatic light into monochromatic light and then the single beam of light is passed to the sample and detected in the detector. UV visible spectrophotometer. It is a device that measures the ultraviolet or visible light that is transmitted from the sample. So ultraviolet visible area measurements span from 200 to 800 nanometer as you all know. The absorption by a molecule of ultraviolet or visible radiation results in the transition between molecules energy levels from lower energy state to the higher energy state. This is saying that when a molecule, uh, when a UV light is passed from a molecule through a molecule, uh, the molecule goes from the lower energy state to the higher energy state by absorbing the amount of light energy. UV visible spectroscopy is a cost effective, simple non-destructive analytical technique suitable for a large spectrum of organic compounds and some inorganic species. As a function of wavelength, UV visible spectrophotometers measures the absorption of transmission of light that passes through the medium. In order to classify and measure the concentration of substances in liquid stream, HPLC is also incorporated with the UV visible spectrophotometer. Then what are the theories of UV visible spectroscopy? The general theory is that when a beam of UV light passes through any molecule containing conjugation that means double bond or uh, transfer of the electrons or electronegativity then the electrons of the molecule undergo transition from lower energy state to the higher energy state or from the lower molecular orbital to the higher molecular orbital. Here three distinct types of electrons are involved in the organic molecule. First is sigma electrons. As we all know it is present in the saturated bonds. UV light does not excite sigma bonds. Thus they do not get absorbed and therefore uh, some of the sigma some of the molecules that contain sigma bonds are used as solvent in the UV analysis like paraffin. Then second is pi electrons. As we all know, pi electrons are present in the unsaturated bonds and in all aromatic compounds. Next is N electrons. Those electrons that are not involved in the bonding between atoms are called as N electrons. And some of the atoms like sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen, halogen contains these N electrons. In this graph or in this diagram, we'll see the transition of the electrons. As you can see, the sigma to sigma antibonding transition takes more amount of energy and then sigma to pi star molecular orbital takes second place, second place and then pi to sigma star transition takes place. 
and then n to sigma star transition takes place this is generally showing the uh, transfer of electrons from sigma to sigma star orbital means the uh, lomo from highest occupied molecular orbital homo to the lowest occupied unoccupied molecular orbital lumo mo when any type of bond like sigma bond undergoes this type of transition the more an amount of energy is required when pi type pi tra transition takes place a uh, relatively lower amount of energy is required these are the transition first is n2 pi antibonding orbital which occurs in unsaturated molecules containing atoms like oxygen nitrogen sulfur etc examples include aldehydes and ketones that are having double bonds or triple bonds n2 pi antibonding occurs in range 2700 to 300 angstrom in carbonyl compounds having double bond n2 pi star exhibit in range 3000 to 3500 angstrom second is pi to pi antibonding orbital this type of transition occurs in the compounds having pi bonds in them example is acetone which have the nanometer 165 and ethylene have the lambda max of 150 nanometer n to sigma star transition this occurs in the saturated molecules with lone pair of electrons example is chloroform which have the wavelength 172 to 175 nanometer and methyl iodide which have the wavelength 258 nanometer hydrogen bonding shifts the ultraviolet absorption to a shorter wavelength fourth type of transition includes sigma to sigma antibonding orbital in this all electrons in the single bonds are with no lone pair of electrons are involved in saturated hydrocarbons in this type of transition large energy is required so absorption band occurs in the far uv range and the range lies from 126 to 135 nanometer commercial uv spectrophotometers do not generally operate between 180 to 200 nanometer that's why sigma to sigma antibonding orbital transition cannot normally be observed example is methane whose wavelength is 121.9 nanometer and methane the wavelength is 135 nanometer now what are chromophores chromophores are any groups which exhibits absorption of ultra electromagnetic radiations in the uv region and it may or may not impart any color to the compound so basically chromophores are the groups that absorbs electromagnetic radiations in the ultraviolet region it may or may not impart any color to the compound chromophores some of the example of chromophores in our body is melanin which is present in the skin which imparts the color to the skin hemoglobin which imparts the red color to the red blood cells bilirubin is also a pigment present in uh, the liver now chromophores with pi to pi star transition with example uh, the examples are ethylenes and acetylenes and chromophores with sigma to sigma antibonding orbital transitions are carbonyl nitrile sulfur compounds and nitro compounds now oxochromes oxochromes are the groups which itself doesn't act as a chromophore but with, when it is attached to any group then it shifts its its absorption maxima towards longer wavelength along with an increase in the intensity of absorption examples include hydroxyl group ammonia group ketone group amine group primary and secondary when an oxochrome amine is added to benzene its absorption changes from 255 to 280 nanometer they also extend conjugation as they have n electrons now changes in the position and intensity of the absorption first is bathochromic shift bathochromic shift is also referred as red shift it involves the shift of absorption maxima towards longer wavelength because of the presence of certain groups like hydroxyl and amine group these are called as oxochromes or due to the or it may also result from the change of the solvent 
example includes by decreasing the polarity of the solvent uh, causes red shift in n to pi anti antibody orbital absorption of carbonyl groups so from the diagram you understand very easily the decrease in uh, the intensity of the radiation is called as hypochromic shift increase in the intensity results in hyperchromic shift and increase in the wavelength results in dichochromic or red shift decrease in the wavelength results in hypsochromic or blue shift second is hypsochromic shift or blue shift it involves the shift of absorption maxima towards shorter wavelengths and may be caused by the removal of conjugation in a system or by change of solvent so there is an example of aniline which when it is present in the basic or normal solution there is no electropositivity in it but in acidic solution it shows electropositivity and as electron pair is no longer present that's why conjugation is also removed so third is hyperchromic shift it involves the increase in the intensity of the absorption and usually brought about by introduction of an oxochrome example methyl group in the second position of pyridine increases emax from 2750 to 3560 and its wavelength is 262 nanometer now hypochromic shift as i said earlier it involves the decrease in the intensity of the absorption it ex its example include methyl groups in the second position of biphenyl causes hypochromic shift applications of the ultraviolet visible spectroscopy uv provides a simple and fast method for quant qualitative and quantitative determination of chemical compounds like detection of the functional groups in compounds detection of the impurities detection of the isomerism detection of conjugation quantitative estimation of ionic solution of metals or ligands and the absorption of a reactant or a product at constant wavelength provides some means of monitoring the progress of a chemical reaction and due to the versatility of the uv visible spectroscopy it is also used in various areas like pharmaceuticals as you all know life sciences food science environmental sciences forensic science and mineralogy so these are the references that i referred for making this slides thank you so much for watching